my head hurts i just did two modules evaluations and i haven't read that much except for manga uh this month that is over and my hair is kind of strange so i don't know what's going on but at least my video camera appears to have recuperated from the fact that it cracked <laughs> so you can see my face already which is pretty cool I'm probably going to start crying on camera since my eyes hurt but let's get into this September wrap-up hello beautiful bookworms my name is Katerina and welcome to my channel and today I'm going to be doing as I previously stated my September wrap-up so let's get already into it I only read one actual book and it was a Kindle book and I have also listened to a narrative a creator constructed thing and then I only read mangas. That's it, that's the wrap up, you can go away. Please don't. Please don't leave. I like to have you here. Okay, so the first thing that I want to talk about before people decide that this video isn't cool enough and go away is the thing that I actually listened to and that was narrated and that is created by a creator here on YouTube and that is A Knife's Edge. So A Knife's Edge is the fifth volume of the Bleeding Ground series that is created by Mason from the channel Mason in the Dark. Now Mason, as I previously stated in some of my videos, is an incredible creator and he is actually doing this series that is kind of genderless because it has so many genres into it. Um, uh, so it's not genderless, it's genreless? I don't know. Is this a thing? I don't know how to speak English today. <laughs> but uh, it kind of has so many different genres. It kind of has dark fantasy and horror and noir and uh, sometimes it feels like a western. I don't know, it's just, it's just so crazy and amazing and creepy and dark and interesting. And this fifth volume was incredible as per usual. And I have to tell you guys, if you haven't subscribed to Mason yet, and if you're not watching all of his creations, he does a lot of things from this um, series that he's working on to shorts, to commentaries and to uh, parodies of stuff you should just go. He's one of the best creators in uh, our actual time frame, so you should check him out. I'm going to leave the playlist for this series up above and I'm going to leave linked down below his channel. If I remember to do so, I really hope so. If not, I'm so sorry, Mason. Then the actual book that I've read, it's a Kindle book and I have decided that I'm going to stop reading this series because if you know me, you know I love trashy vampires, but even I have a fucking limit of Ha reading actual something that is good, <laughs> which is not the case. So I've read, uh, I, I don't even remember the name of this book or the name of the author, but let's just pretend that I do. I've read Midnight Crown, I think that's the name, uh, by Rebecca L. Garcia. I think that's the name of this person. Um, and uh, I've read the first one, which was Shadow Kissed, and it was acceptable, and I was intrigued. Midnight Crown is just... no. <laughs> it's enough. I gave it a two star because I'm like, yeah, sure, it has some enjoyable moments. Uh, but it's kind of like... <sighs> the plot. Where is the plot? There is a plot, but I mean, am I fucking interested? No. Everyone could die in this book. And I'm really sorry because I know how hard it is to actually write something and she has a four book plan and this is only number two, but I'm giving up. I just, I don't have the time frame or the mindset to actually be waiting for this series and, and getting this series and reading the series when I can be reading better trashy vampire things. And I, I didn't, I'm not going to even tell you what this is about um, because I just think you'll be wasting your time, quite honestly. She has a lot of fans, so good for her. And if you've read anything of her and you enjoy it, great for you. Um, if not, I mean, don't start, I guess. At least not in this series. She has other series. If you want to go check out her other series, but this one, just, ugh, enough. And now this whole wrap-up is going to be just manga. Um, because I have no fucking time in my life to read anything else. I know it's pathetic and hurtful, but at least I enjoyed myself with some of the manga. So, first manga that I have here is volumes 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9 of Witch Hat Atelier. 
I think it's five, six, seven, eight, and nine. I am not sure if I read four last month. Well, August or in September, but it was a bunch of Witch Hat Atelier volumes. This is by Kam Kamome Shirahama, and these are currently all of the volumes that are out of Witch Hat Atelier. I do have a review for my reading experience and what I'm thinking about uh, the series as a whole from volume 1 to volume 9, since I don't think we have a prediction from when volume 10 is coming out, but I'm loving it. Spoilers for that review, it's if every single one of the volumes is five stars, and I do recommend if you haven't read manga ever, you can start here. I mean, I know it's going to probably be a little bit longish, but it's only nine volumes out, and you can read it fairly easy. And if you love fantasy, epic fantasy, actually, this one will be amazing for you. And yeah, I don't know, it's just, it's so beautiful. The art style and the story on itself and all of the characters and even dark parts of this are embraced as something, it's not really beautiful, but like something that is a part of the world, and I really enjoy that. Um, and before I break my wrist, that's all I'm going to say. If you want to know any more of my opinions, I do have that in-depth review for you. It's not spoilery, so you can go check it out. And then for the rest of them, in no particular order, I have read uh, Rose and Blood of Volume 3 by Kashiru Ishizue, and this is a trashy vampire thingy, that I enjoy. It has plot, it has character motives, it has a bigger baddie, and it, it's, it's like, it's interesting. So I'd rather be reading this than reading the other thing. I enjoy it, I keep enjoying it. I reviewed volume one and two, I believe. I'm not going to be reviewing every single volume, but if this reaches its end quickish, I might review the series. It's enjoyable if you like vampires, if you like, um, Reverse harem tropes, um, this is definitely one for you. Then I've read one of the greatest things that I've been reading this year, and I was so happy. I read Spy Family, Volume 1 and 2. This is by Tatsuya Endu, and I want to watch the series. I want to watch the animation. I bet it's perfect. I have a fucking huge crush on Detective Twilight or Agent Twilight, Spy Twilight, <laughs> whatever you fucking want to call him. I love the family. I love how this is kind of dangerous, but at the same time very nostalgic, at the same time very focused on family values, but also on each and every single one of our characters being a little bit outside of normal and being just searching themselves for someone that understands him and a family, even though a family might complicate their business. And it's just... It's perfection. I want more. I want more Spy Family. This this is something that I, I wasn't... I, I never thought. I never thought. And I'm just so happy you have no idea. Needless to say, folks, uh, every single one of you guys that has never read manga because it's like, oh, it's uh, shoujo or shonen or seinen or fucking what, this is kind of like historical fiction spies and uh, mafias and plans to make wars and thwart the world and how to and how a family that is not actually a family but it's like a made-up family is going to solve this so give this shit a chance this is funny as shit but also emotional as fuck and all the characters are amazing so read this if you're not a manga reader you're going to like this if you are a manga reader you're going to like this if you're something that likes stories i think you're gonna like this then i got involved in the strange uh manga part of uh my soul and i read volume two and three of samuel paris i have a disclosure to make i am going to stop reading the series ah this is by yun ojino and I'm going to stop. Um, I was interested. This has kind of like a sci-fi strange premise to it, but I have to stop. I, I, I just... It's not about our characters. Well, it's kind of about them. It's not about their romance per se. I do love female feminine romance or male male romance. I don't give a shit about that. I like it. It's romance. It's normal. But, but it's just... This is fan service to the max, and at the same time, the plot is there, but it's so fucking quick. And now people are dying, and I'm not even feeling it. At the beginning, I was like, oh shit, 
um, there's feelings here. Now there's no feelings here. I'm, I don't care about this and I decided I'm going to stop keeping manga and books that I don't care about. So I'm just going to either sell these for a lower price to people that actually want them because they're absolutely new and money was spent on this or I'm just going to give them to charity if nobody wants it because I mean I don't find this offensive but I found the I find the fact that I don't give a shit about the characters <laughs> a little bit offensive because I, we should if you want fun with the books you have to give a shit about the characters so yeah I I it was enjoyable I gave them like three stars I think but it's just enough enough is enough I don't care about this then another one that it was kind of sort of enjoyable but I mean I'm done with it to be fucking honest is Mac and this is volume two um this is supposed to be like male male romance or something uh it's about this dude and he likes to eat and fuck demons and he's now training to be a demon himself and to surpass his like mentor or his creator let's just say um the duality of the characters and the way that they um struggle with the thin line between love and hate um is actually really enjoyable um but the fact is that there's there's just so many things that are strange and frankly sometimes a little bit gross just because they want to be so yeah I don't I don't care I don't care it was enjoyable when I read them I'm like oh yeah um this and that and sometimes the art style is cool sometimes it is not it has a lot of art style changes but again I'm going to try and sell volume one which is there and this one as well or give it a charity because I don't care. I don't want to waste my time knowing more about this because I don't care about the story or the characters. That's it. And then finally, I read the three only volumes of Mars Red. So, volume one, volume two, and volume three. So, the story of this is by Buno Fujizawa and the artist by Karakara Kimuri and apparently this uh, is a story that was written for um, performative theater and then it was adapted into manga uh, first into anime I think and now into manga um, I was not expecting it to be as cool as it was since it, it's not the medium that it was supposed to be listened to it's kind of like spoken theater if you know what I mean um, and I heard that the people that went to watch the show when it was still um, presented, because I think it stopped, really enjoyed it uh, and the way that it talked to our souls and stuff. Um, watching the anime is a new experience and reading the manga is a new experience. Um, so this is a vampire story, which, I mean, I grovel for vampire stories but this is a very serious vampire story um it's about the fact that um the military the japanese military is kind of creating uh, these super soldiers but with vampire powers so actual vampires uh soldiers that were in the war and were bitten by vampires uh, that were from uh, england so this is about a war with Europe and England and actually they talk about how England has a program with vampires and vampire creation which has a lot to do with um, the Helsing manga if you've ever read anything about that um, and so Japan decides well fuck it we're going to make an army of uh, soldiers that were bitten by, by vampires that can uh, detect them and fight them uh, however and this all of this is for not losing human lives because they're sick and tired of losing their soldiers uh, to people, to the others that are vampires. Um, however, uh, there's a lot of discussion here about what is the actual difference between a vampire and a human. Uh, and there's a discussion that the vampire is the one that has the most weaknesses. So here they can swim, uh, so they can traverse water. Um, they don't like onions or strong smells in general, you know, affect them a lot. Lights affect them a lot. Noises affect them a lot. And um, just the fact of... Um, how do I say this? The sun burning them and they always have to be hidden in the mornings and can only work in the evenings uh, and nights. Like the vampire is an extremely flawed 
creature, and I agree with this actually, uh, there's been a lot of takes on vampires, but normally the vampire uh, is very flawed and has a lot of issues that it can surpass most of the times, but their actual weaknesses more than the human beings. Uh, so all their strength and uh, speed and everything, it's kind of like just to say sorry for all of those weaknesses that they have. It's like kind of like you are so weak, take these and feel better about yourself. And so it's it's a little bit on um, how these, these humans that are now vampires uh, feel more human than ever because they feel more weaknesses, they feel more sad and separated from their lives and how everything used to be and how everything is at the moment and their their families are characters as well here and how they deal with their supposed death in service of the military because nobody can know that they're vampires now and also uh people from the military that are actually broken and need to do something about this project however they are uh looking at this in the wrong way and in the way that it will probably cost more lives or do more wrong than good and it also has a lot about the the fact that Japan sees other countries as invaders and has people that are trying to colonize them and change the way that they are in their culture uh, so it does have a lot of details that are not so much fantasy as actual things that maybe a lot of Japanese people debated with and the fact that they feel weakness and the fact that and also other human beings of course so it's kind of like um kind of like approaches very in a very like toned down way because it's only three volumes but like the meaning of existence and why human beings are the way they are and why are we fundamentally flawed and weak but at the same time how we take those weaknesses and do better with them and um, how there's like always a motive to live and develop ourselves and develop like uh, technologies and try to be better um, you know it's just it's really deep and I, I really enjoy it um, I do believe it should be longer but it really was enjoyable so and I think that maybe if it was longer the questions wouldn't linger uh, and they will try to answer them and that will be wrong because the idea is that you you think about these things instead of actually being given the answers to and I think that, that was really cool I like this manga and now I'm hopeful that I can watch the anime if it's still there somewhere sad that I can see the spoken word thingy but it will probably be in Japanese and I'm not that fluent <laughs> so <laughs> yeah but it was it was one of the good things of this manga reading, except for Witch Hat Atelier and Spy Family. The others were very meh. So this was good. I enjoyed it. So that's going to be all for today's video. Please leave a like or subscribe and tell me in the comments down below if you know any of these stories that I've read, if you want to know them, if you got excited for some of these mangas, uh, or if you know more mangas that can be interesting or vampire stories that can be interesting for me to read, I will gladly do so because I'm the vampire whore, the vampire trash is me. Um, so yeah, that's going to be all for this video. Um, and happy readings to all of you now that we are entering this spooky season. I have planned some content, hopefully my work and professional and personal life will let me show you the spooks. We will see. So that's going to be all for today and happy readings to you all. Bye!